Skinny. This is a game that the Bengals looked like they had it in hand. They were in control in the first half. Second half, very different. Where did it all go wrong? Yeah, I mean, Chris, you can start with the, the first Bengals drive of the second half. They're up 17-13. They force the Chiefs to punt. They drive it down inside the 10-yard line. And on fourth down and one, Joe Mixon gets stuffed for a three-yard loss. And from that point forward, the offense got 43 yards the rest of the half. It absolutely did nothing. And you can point to the big plays as well. I mean, six plays in this game. The Chiefs had 225 of their yards on six plays. It's been the theme for this team all season long. You know, we talked with Lou Anarumo earlier in the week, and he said the big plays, explosive plays, have to stop. The question is, how do you stop them? And they couldn't do it once again, and it really came back to bite them. And for this team, that's going to be really the story. As much as the Joe Burrow injury is going to be a story, or injuries, it was the defense's regression and giving up those big plays that really led to this team not making the playoffs. Defensively, I don't think this is on them. 373 yards they did give up, but only one touchdown, six field goals, though. What can you take away from their performance today? Yeah, I mean, the, the team has done a good job for the most part in the red zone defensively all year, and it kind of did that again today. I mean, they held Harrison Butker to six field goals and just the one touchdown for Patrick Mahomes. But I don't know what you can take from this performance because it's the same old, same old. It's given up big runs. It's given up big pass plays. And it's different people each time. Jordan Battle misses a tackle on a play. Jermaine Pratt takes a bad route into a hole on another running play. Cam tiller Bruder just came back from, from, uh, from injury and coming off injured reserve. He gives Rasheed Rice a free release off the line of scrimmage and it leads to a 67-yard play. Cam's been great. He was great before the injury. Have no idea how that happened, but it happened. And I think the thing is, I'm not sure they have explanations for this. I know they know they can't allow it. As I mentioned, Louie Aruma was really adamant about we've got to stop giving up big plays. And with that on the line, and with that as kind of the theme for the week, they gave up a bunch of big plays. It's good if you have Harrison Bucker on your team for Fantasy Football Championships. What is the answer, though, because these explosive plays continue to be an issue for this defense? Yeah, I mean, and I think that's the thing is, is there is no answer to it. Um, do you blitz more? Do you blitz less? Do you play more zone? Do you play less zone? Um, you know, how do you fix the tackling? I think that's been a frustrating part for this year. There have been some games where they've been really solid in that department, and if you go back, those are some of the games they did really good in stopping teams from running the football. They did really good in limiting explosive plays. So it's been different themes from different parts of this defense all year long. You know, the DJ Reader's injury probably factored in, but they weren't great against the run when DJ Reader was healthy and playing. The two linebackers, today Jermaine Pratt has one assisted tackle, one. Um, that can't happen. As I, as I mentioned, he took a bad route into a hole on a, on a big running play. So I, I think for them, it is really going to be for Lou Anarumo and his staff uh, a reflection of what can be done differently in 2024 to limit explosive plays because, boy, they gave up a ton of them in a year where defenses did a great job across the board in the NFL from allowing or limiting explosive plays from happening. The Bengals weren't among that group, though. Offensively, we know Kansas City has a really good defense, but the Bengals offense was able to move the ball quite a bit in the first half. Second half, though, just 80 yards. What did Kansas City do differently in the second half? Yeah, as you mentioned, just the 80 yards and, and five first downs after a first half in which they pick, picked up uh, 14 first downs, had 183 yards total offense. Jake Browning mentioned, you know, they took a, took the spying to him. You remember in the first half he did such a good job rolling out and, and moving on bootleg plays and using his feet to create some plays. And then they took the doubling the outside wide receivers for a lot of the second half. Jamar Chase didn't have much in the receiving department. Seven targets, three catches. T. Higgins was limited by the hamstring, came back in and had a reception. Tyler Boyd had three targets and, and I believe two receptions. I mean, they got nothing out of the big three wide receivers. But once they took those guys away and started spying on Jake Browning and then really stopping the Bengals running and getting them into some third and longs, the offense was really hamstrung, especially after that first drive of the second half. And then on that final drive, it all culminates with four sacks given up. Uh, what was it? Was it just pressure? Was it Browning holding onto the ball too long? What was Kansas City doing? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is the Bengals running game at that point is, is completely inoperable because you're trying to throw the ball with little time to go. And as Jake Browning said in his post-game press conference, he did hold it too long, trying to let plays develop down the field. And then some of it was Steve Spagnola blitzed. And, and maybe after they picked up that first down on that, that big conversion on third and 18, maybe that was a time to try a little bit of the screen game. You still had time to do some of those things, but uh, that's complete hindsight. Uh, no doubt, though, that they dialed up the pressure once they knew the only thing Jake Browning could do was drop back and pass and had to hold it, and they just were sharks in the water. So the Bengals now sitting at 8-8, eight and eight, still have one game to go in this regular season. What do they have to play for in the final week? I mean, obviously, you know, this is going to sound hollow, 
but you know, nine and eight is a winning record. It would be a third straight winning record. It's not what you wanted it to be this season. It was not a playoff team. I mean, at the beginning of the year, this was a team that I know I picked to, to win the Super Bowl. You know, a lot of other media members nationally picked this team to win the Super Bowl, and it got derailed in many, many ways. Um, but yeah, I mean, playing for a winning season, I think that probably means something to a lot of these guys. There's some milestones to play for. Joe Mixon's about 70 yards away from 1,000 yards. Uh, Jamar Chase is four catches away from 100 catches. He'd become only the third Bengals receiver in history to do that. So there's some milestone things to play for, some pride things to play for, but it's going to be interesting. Cleveland's not going to probably play its starters. It's already clinched the five seed no matter what happens, and obviously the Bengals aren't playing for a playoff burst, so I'm going to see. I'm going to guess we'll see a lot of backups on both teams from both teams next week when the Bengals host the Browns in the season finale.